day eight of the red Russian kale day eight. Now these are the seedlings here that I have grown using the paper towel method. Um, they're now sprouted and begin stretching and reaching toward light, beginning to conduct photosynthesis. Now this one here, it didn't really bush out as much. There's some of them that didn't germinate and this is just part of the game. This is just how it happens. Sometimes the genetics aren't that, uh, aren't that good. Now it's being inserted into the soul wall. There's a little pocket there and it's dripping. The nutrients are dripping from the top along with the um, water um, is being supplied to the plant. So this is this easy. Here's day 14 right here. Now, if you take a look, take a look closer, you can see the little, little leaves uh, coming in. They look like little fingers, little cockroaches. I don't know what these things look like, little alien fingers. They're just weird looking. Red Russian kale has always been like a weird looking plant to me, but so they're coming in. These are the rest of them right here, just lined up in the row. Um, and this is day 20. Now something you can see right here. This is one of the bad things or the downsides of growing baby salad greens because it's almost time for harvest right now, but it hit, the plant has a deficiency. It has a deficiency. That's why it's starting to yellow and show chlorosis. And it even up close, it has some intervenal chlor chlorosis as well. But this was, this is what happened. So you kind of dilemma right now. You got to figure out what you're doing, but now on day 28, you can see I came through. You can see I came through. It was a magnesium deficiency and I um, correctly dosed it, brought it back. Now this takes a special skill to do and not everyone's able to do this, especially eight days. That's why I say this is the downside of growing these greens because I would have had them in the market already last week, but you got eight days to work with when you're dealing with these between um, day 20 and day 28, I had eight days to work. If, if I go any longer, these plants are going to start, they're going to go from these baby little fingers and they're going to grow into like um, big hands. So it's not going to be, you're not going to be able to sell them as baby salad greens. But right here, they're still in the baby stage. Um, there's still a slight de uh, magnesium deficiency in there. To, to the untrained eye, you won't be able to see it. But those of you who've been doing it for a while, you can notice it. There's a slight deficiency in there, a magnesium deficiency. And here's the harvest, pretty much leave... Um, still leave some plant on there to conduct photosynthesis that still needs to obtain energy to grow. Um, and then what we do here is we just harvest them. You don't want to get a lot of um, stem in there. So you see right there, there's no, there's not too much stem on, or there's no, no stem on there. So we're doing pretty good. You want to have as much, the least amount of stem as you can. Nobody want to be chewing on stems. Now, overall, it's a good plant to grow. It's easy and it's popular. Seven days later, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, right back. Seven days later, we're all ready for new cuttings. Only seven days later, you have a new set of leaves that have grown, and it's time to harvest once again. This is the beauty about this, ever uh, the perpetual harvest. This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Toodles.